All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Sideboard MTG. My name's Eric, and tonight we've got another Deb's deck. This one's going to be Mono Black Control. Hope you guys like it. If you didn't see the deck tech, you should check the link in the description box below and uh, check out the the deck tech. Um, all right, guys. So we're gonna we're gonna kind of jump right into this. I hope everyone likes tonight's show. Give it that thumbs up if you do. Subscribe to the content if you're new. Um, and we're just gonna kind of kind of get into this. I am going to end up restarting Magic Online because for some reason, like, I'm not getting some artwork and that aggravates me. Um, maybe we can just get it to reload. Will that work? Is that possible? Probably not. Anyway, <clears throat> check the deck on Reddit. Uh, put two cents in. All right, cool. What's up, Marcus? How you doing? Beast King, this is your first time in the sideboard stream and forever. Well, welcome back, Beast King. Welcome back. Uh, Magic Online seeming to have a little bit of a a problem. Like we're having a lot of loading issues. I don't know. I don't know what's going up. I was just having a problem connecting to YouTube Gaming, um, so like I couldn't connect to the ingest server. Uh, so maybe maybe there's something going on there. It might be on my end, but uh, yeah, we'll see what's going on here. Still no Dusk Legion Blitz. Come on, load my cards. Anyway, uh, YouTube is flooded with uh, election traffic. It's insane. That could be what it is. Um, I, I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe it's just that. Maybe, uh, maybe that's it. Anyway, um, if you guys are... You guys are up for it. We're gonna we're gonna go play some of this mono black control. As always, if, uh, if you haven't seen Deb's uh, deck tech on this deck, you should. Um, the link is right up there, and there's a link in the description box below if you want to check out the deck list yourself. Uh, there's a couple links for it there. If you're a Mana Traders user or want to become a Mana Traders user, the links for that are down there. Um, try to always put up those quick rents for those of you that do, do use Mana Traders. You just click it, click rent. You got the cards. Export. Let's go. Um, probably didn't type my password right yeah man sorry about the dog man uh Austin what's up Austin we're gonna we're gonna see what's wrong here I mean um, sometimes magic online doesn't want to load all the all the cards sometimes it works just fine I don't know it's magic online right um, yeah when he barked at me in the cage kind of I was like, you gotta be kidding me, man. Come on, Natsu. That's a cool dog name, right? Natsu. He, he gets a dog that's from, like, the Arctic and names it after Fire Dragon Slayer. Okay. Very lore-tastic there. Okay, load magic. Who else we got here? We got Rocker? What's up, Rocker? How you doing, man? baller name on the pup. You guys like Fairy Tale? <laughs> Fairy Tale is one of my favorite animes. Okay. Come on, just just load. Is there just a ton of traffic right now? Hey, some of them loaded. Some of these are some of these are a little foilier than others. Either way, we'll be alright. Um, hopefully we got all of our, our art now. We can play the magic game. We can win the video game. Alright. Uh, Moment of Craving. I love that card. I think that card's really good against red deck right now. Alright, so basically the idea of this deck is to pretty much um, kill everything. Um, just kill absolutely everything, whether you can target it or not target it, just kill it. Um, draw additional cards with Discovery. We will not be casting Dispersal. There is no way in this deck to cast Dispersal. Um, no blue mana whatsoever. So the only side of that card we're using it for is, um, is, is for the Discovery. Now we've got everything 
for for kill spells we got everything from fungal infection you know uh, minus one minus one create a, a sapperling um, to you know cast down um, cast down is actually you know four of them this deck I think cast down is really good but it could could come to backfire plague crafter to make them sacrifice like I said whether you can target it or not and with this much early removal like cast downs and fungal infections there's a really good chance that you can use your plague crafter on turn three with little to no fear of, um, you know, not being able to get the card you want. Um, and then, you know, you got Ravenous Chupacabras. So, like, this thing looks like it would just prey on, on mid-range decks. <clears throat> now, I mean, you've got Dusk Legion Zealot. Kind of produces a little bit of a roadblock against red decks, aggressive decks, things like that. Um, but for the most part, you just want to, you know, cast everything down. You create your roadblocks with Fungal uh, Infection. Um, then just wipe the board with uh, Golden Demise and... When they rebuild, you know, you're on Eldest Reborn and such. Uh, one thing that I do like about this deck is because there's four Eldest Reborns, there's a really good chance that you're just going to have these going off uh, fairly often. And if you do, you can keep a Tetsamok in your hand, and as they deal with this Tetsamok, put enough creatures in front of it, things of that nature. Um, you can just use, um, you know, keep getting Tetsamok back, but the turn that the Eldest Reborn's on the stack, you can just reveal to the whole board and get a Tetsamok back from the graveyard if you have one in your hand, uh, which may actually warrant, you know, enough of a synergy to actually end up using more Tetsamok. Um, I have played a couple, like, just little Tetsamok control decks or whatever in the past uh, with Eldest Reborn, just kind of goofing off to see uh, if I like the, uh, the idea. I really did like the idea of being able to bring Tetsamok back for little to no mana, um, which with Eldest Reborn, you're looking at no mana. And when you have one of these in your hand, with it, with his trigger on the stack, you can you can just put prey counters on everything, and it just it goes ham. So, uh, pretty cool. Um, some scheduled maintenance at ten. Maybe uh, you should still be here. All right. Well, man, if uh, if we're here, then uh, we'll see you then. And if we're not here, the replay will be up for you. All right. Uh, what's up, Kenneth? How you doing? Uh, the deck's flow chart. Um, is it your creature? Yes. Let it live. No, kill it immediately. <laughs> right? That's pretty much it. Um, kill it, exile it, do something to it, get it out of here. We don't want it. Um, we've got duress for control decks, you know, pulling cards so we can kill those counter spells because, you know, can't target them. Yeah, whatever. Um, you love removal, tribal. Prepare the salt, opponents. Prepare the salt. Well, you got a salt shaker there, poopy. Uh, moment of craving, you know, just gaining additional life. We can bring our Tetsamox back, you know, with his Zarath. Uh, we've got Joshua Vess. We've got Ritual of Soot. A little bit of murder action here. More Golden Demise. More Argyle's Bloodfast. Just, um, you know, all the good cards in black. So, um, if you were looking to upgrade this deck, I think you would drop a Bone Dragon and possibly cut on maybe, um, you know, a kill spell or two. Uh, and bring in uh, a couple um, Doom Whispers. Now, I'm not for sure that I would actually drop the Tetsamox. Um, Tetsamox possibly going to be better in our matchups tonight than a lot of people realize. Like, when I was playing with Tetsamox, I, I had a lot of really good luck. And it could have just been luck, but... And I, I actually really enjoy running decks that have multiple Tetsamox. If you can get him back. Um, so, and I played a lot of him with Liliana as well back in the day, uh, back in the day, like, yeah, way back in the day, like a whole month and a half ago. Um, but yeah, uh, back when Lily was still around because, you know, you could play Lily on five and you, you bring back a Tetsamok or something. And, uh, I was trying to make that work and, um, that part of the deck seemed great, but I could never get, you know, everything else to kind of pair up with it. So anyway, we're going to play this. So does it play Nexuses? Uh, you must be talking about a different deck. Uh, time stream stretch navigator. Uh, need some love. Does it play Nexus? I think the soot value. Um, you think you value soot higher than Dev or Seth? You think all the green explore decks? Um, yeah, it's really good against the green explore decks. So you know, I'm not going to deny that. Uh. Well, I mean, we can draw into more cards here. I'll keep. It's not a horrible hand. I mean, we'll just turn one folly. Uh-oh. Well, the good news is we will not be targeting our opponent. Um, our opponent's creatures, when we try to Golden Demise, may work, may not work. 
we'll see. Uh, there's that curious obsession. Okay. We'll probably. Oh, he didn't swing. He didn't swing. Bye, bye, curious obsession. Well. All righty then. We'll cast discovery. See if we can find us another land. Alright, so there's a Tetsamok. We can go ahead and throw that in the graveyard. Um, yeah, we'll put this Tetsamok in the graveyard. We'll put the land on top of our library. Go ahead and draw that. And then next turn, Golden Demise. I mean, our opponent's already lost this game for not swinging. I don't know why he wouldn't swing with the Siren Storm Tamer. Um, yeah, that just seems... It had to be a misclick. Had to be. Had to be a misclick. Alright, so he's got the counter spell open for this. I'm still going to try to run it out. I don't care. I mean, I think I still have to attempt this Golden Demise. So, we'll see what happens. Maybe he's just sitting on Merfolk uh, Trickster. And if he's sitting on Merfolk Trickster, then, you know, we'll be alright. Dive down. Just going to make his Miscloak Herald bigger. He can save one of them. Okay. I'm, I'm happy with that. That, that works for me. So, we'll see. Yeah, a punt it, punt it bad. Like, he would have been drawing additional cards, which means he would have been able to do additional stuff. Uh, Memorial of Finally is not horrible. Um, I'm just going to try to Plague Crafter here. He's just going to counter that. That's fine. I just wanted to kind of like use my mana anyway. And... Which is... He's already fired off a dive down. He's got one card left in hand. Like, just losing that Curious Obsession is just the exact opposite of what this deck wants to do. So... I mean... I'm just going to fire off this Eldest Reborn. And if this works, then we, we should just be game. Yeah, there we go. I mean, he scooped it up. He should have been drawing additional cards there. Should have had counter spells. He should have been able to use that dive down on the one with the Curious Obsession. He should have been drawing cards every single turn. Uh, and then forced me to actually have to remove it. But it uh, didn't work that way, so we walked away with a win. Uh, Moment of Cravings, pretty good here. See, I, I actually don't think you want cards like Veraska's Contempt. Uh, cast Down will kill the Djinn, which is great. Um, I love Duress in this matchup. Uh, Playcrafter's fine. Um, just because we want to keep some type of aggression. Uh, we've got, you know, Dusk Legion Zealots that we can, you know, trade for uh, the Playcrafter kind of upgrading there. Um, I don't really think that I want Bone Dragon. I don't think that Tetsamok's gonna, um, you know, be how we win this game. I think we're going to win this game off of just, you know, sheer uh, value and, you know, making sure that they can't draw cards. So I, that that's where I want to be is just um, ripping their hand apart, killing everything that they, they play, um, forcing them to have the protection spell for everything. Um, and that I think that's how I want to do this. So uh, I need to take one more card out. Maybe we can get rid of one Plague Crafter. We'll go from there. I mean, yeah, there's an argument to bring in maybe some more, like, yeah, see, I actually think Ritual of Sits takes too long. And, um, I, um, instead of Ritual of Sit, I would just rather have more direct kill spells. Um, it's actually really easy to beat the Mono Blue deck if you can kill the creature with a Curious Obsession on it. Uh, if they can't draw additional cards to to keep up with you, then most of the time they're not going to be able to you know fight with you. So we need to make him spend his hand trying to protect a particular card. All right, so there's an argument to playing this right now. Um, if he has Dive Down, Island, Curious Obsession in hand, we're not going to be able to kill it. Um, so I'm just going to kill this right now. Just I, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Um, I don't want him to get a single additional draw in. Uh, so 
that that's why I'm just gonna kill it right now. So I, I don't I don't think that Ritual of even though Ritual of Soot kills everything in the entire deck, I don't think that's the type of card you want to bring in um, versus these decks. Um, I think you actually want to be bringing in. Um, <clears throat> I think you actually want to be bringing in um, more like. Uh, uh, you know, just just kill spells. Just kill their their few creatures. Um, I mean, he may be trying to uh, to get a Merfolk Trickster in. We will have to worry about that. I think if he had a Merfolk Trickster, he would have eaten the Sapperling right here. Um, so now we're just gonna kind of sit back. I'm gonna swing. I, I would like for him to go ahead and tap out, um, tap out of um, out of counter spell mana. Like, if he tries to play a Trickster or anything right here, then I can just duress him. Um, so, I, I think I think we have the Tempo 1 right now. And again, this is just a Tempo War, and we can just win with this 2-2. See, there's a Tempest Gen. So, I'll fire off uh, Cast Down. If he's got a protection for it, he has to use it now, which means he's tapped down. Which means we get to kill it next turn. And we can duress. So... We'll go ahead, duress our opponent. We know we want to duress. All right, so what does our opponent got? He's got another dive down, another Tempest Gen. Uh, I'm going to take the dive down because we're getting to the point where we can actually pay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cast down this Tempest Gen. He does have another Tempest Gen, so we will need to get to the point where we have uh, another kill spell. I'm pretty sure we can get to a kill spell. I'm um, worried that we might pull, like, um, you know, Eldest Reborn or something like that, which will make his uh, spell pierce that much better. But we should be okay. Um, I think I want to see more cards here. So I'm just going to cast Discovery. Alright, so there's the Eldest Reborn. I do want the Eldest Reborn, but we'd have to get two more mana to be able to cast it. It's actually not that impossible. So, we cast the Dust Legion Zealot, and we'll put it on top. And we're not dead to Tempest Gin yet. And we put this in the graveyard. And then we'll just go ahead, play our Dust Legion Zealot. Next turn, we got one additional land. All right, so there we go. Now we have the land uh, play Eldest Reborn around the Tempest Gen. Curious obsession by the opponent. All right. So he might actually start getting into um, counter spells and such now, which could be a little bit of a problem. Need those kill spells. All right, well, I'm just going to fire this off anyway. He has to counter it. So, swing and pass. Does he have a trickster? He does have a trickster, so he'll get to eat something here. And he gets around the Eldest Reborn. That's a little bit nasty. That's a little bit nasty. Um... That's a wizard. Another curious obsession. Okay. So we need like fungal infection off the top. Yeah, he's probably like not being able to kill the the gin. Uh, we'll play around spell pierce here since we drew it. I mean, he keeps the gin. And then we're just dead on crackback. Yep, there we go. What's up? Eric, the Ark? The Arch? Mm -hmm. Um... I guess Ritual Sit's still better than Golden Demise. 
we're on the play now. Does that matter? We just needed a like a different kill spell. We we seen two eldest reborns and we just needed something like murder. Mm. Not a lot that I want to be getting back, so I'll take the other plate crafter too. Check out this cool standard combo deck. You've been waiting for this one? Welcome. Um, sure. There you go. Check out this cool standard combo deck. Let's check it out. It's not a horrible hand. Um, we just got to run our opponent out of cards, and I mean, this could do it. Land of War Elves. Of Helm Druid, uh, Plaka Worm. All right, so we're ramping into a Plaka Worm. Guy's blessing. Uh, what's the combo? All right, so you get a ton of land. You got Nexus of Fates, uh, Omniscience. Okay, so you're ramping him to Omniscience, and then you're casting Overflowing Insight, drawing Nexus of Fates, recasting Nexus of Fate. Eh, it could work. It could work. All right, so. Let's just turn one to rest. Take any curious obsessions he may have. If he decided he was keeping the hand because he has a, an obsession. Okay, so he does have a Tempest Gen. Alright, so I'm going to take Opt here. The new Simic Overflowing Insight deck? Oh man, I haven't seen that. Like, I like, I like casting some 7 mana sorceries. I'm cool, I'm hip with it. I'll cast some 7 mana sorceries. Um, I basically just took his op because I didn't want him to try to draw additional lands. Um, he played his island. Did he draw an opt off the top? <laughs> uh, funny opponent. He, he, he tapped. Alright, so... No, uh, no second land from the opponent. Which means we get to start digging. Discovery. We'll go graveyard. Graveyard. Fungal infection. Not a bad card. What's up, Barry Drake? How are you doing, good sir? Welcome, welcome. Plague Crafter. I would like to like get something like a um, oh, what's it called? The Dusk Legion Zealot. I'd like to get a Dusk Legion Zealot on the battlefield first. All right, so we're gonna let this resolve. Then I'm going to moment of craving it. I, like, I wanted to do that while he didn't have any mana. All right, so he did get his third land, so he can cast Tempest Gen. Which means he will be trying to protect the Tempest Gen. Um, we're probably just going to draw some cards here. Alright, so we know that he's got Tempest Gen, Wizard's Retort, Dive Down. <clears throat> we're going to pay some life. Duress. Ooh, I like these. These are all great. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> so he's got Wizard's Retort mana up. So let's go ahead and duress him. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss all of these because we're going to get a fresh look. Do you have a negate? Do you have a way to stop this? Or are you just going to re Wizard's Retort this? Nope. He's not going to retort it. He's going to keep it. He's got Disdainful Stroke, which, yeah, that can counter some stuff for us. Uh, Wizard's Retort... He's got another Merfolk Trickster, so we're probably going to see that. Um, I'm going to take the Retort, because that's more likely to get something that I don't want him to, to take away from me. So I'm just going to go ahead. We're going we're gonna to look for some more cards. Ooh, I like all of this. So let's go top of library. 
top of library, draw the Dusk Legion Zealot, play Dusk Legion Zealot. And this will draw us the, the land. Which will play our land for the turn and pass the turn. Got me, opponent. Got me. Stop my 1-1. One, one. Curious obsession. Alright, so I'm going to make him spend some cards on this. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna cast this, uh, this Fungal Infection. Oh no, I can't cast this Fungal Infection. That is colorless only. Okay, well... He did get me. So now he's got Dive Down and Disdainful Stroke available. Alright, well, let's... Let's cancel. Let's uh, attack for one. Get in that extra little point of damage. Yeah, I'm gonna go the Playcrafter route. So we could go one, two, three. So we could pay four to create to make five mana. Am I gonna use five mana? I guess. So if I do that, create, and then one, two, three, and I leave two up. Yeah, I like that. So that's five mana, which means I can play Crafter and Dusk Legion Zealot. All right, it seems fine. <clears throat> okay, that resolves, which means bye bye Merfolk Trickster. I'm getting rid of the Dusk Legion Zealot. We'll play second Dusk Legion Zealot. Oh no, I tapped mana for that. Oh, I forgot I had mana in my pool. Oh, but we drew, we drew a card we can cast. Let's do that. Let's do that. Plague Crafter, Plague Crafter. I'm going to go Graveyard Top. I think that another Plague Crafter is going to be good to get rid of this Tempest Gen. All right, so we've seen uh, Curious Obsession, and now we know he has Dive Down, Tempest Gen, and Disdainful Stroke. So we'll probably see Tempest Gen here. All right, there's the Tempest Gen. It's like he sideboarded into Mono Blue. Yeah, maybe. So we get this now produces six mana. All right, so six. Plague Crafter. He's going to scoop it up. He's going to scoop it up. Nah, that's going to be it. All right. Cast down to Eldest. No, see, he had a he had a um, Disdainful Stroke in hand, which would have stopped the Eldest Reborn, and he had a Dive Down, which would have stopped Cast Down. Um, so the extra Plague Crafter, he had no counter that could stop Plague Crafter, so Plague Crafter was what... Uh, what seemed to be the best right there, and um, yeah, it was just uh, the card we needed to to, to destroy him there. Um, yeah, uh, that that is a pretty decent deck, and uh, I think the fact that we had all of the the low to the ground uh, aggressive tools, you know, to to really stop uh, the opponent's like game plan, I think that that was that was what did it for us, um, and then we just win the game in the late game with. Um, you know, play crafters and stuff, so, uh, yeah. He couldn't do both. Did he not have three mana open? I could have sworn he had three mana open. Either way, I mean, play crafter just answers, it gets around all of that. Like, you play crafter him, now he can't dive down at all, and it gets under. Like, I don't know, I mean, I, I think just playing the card that gets under is better. If anything was a punt there, creating the additional three mana that I didn't need was probably uh, the biggest punt. 
Um, why no Doom Whispers and no four Veroskas? Okay, so Dev said something about that in his deck tech. Uh, this is a budget version of the deck. Um, that, so if you guys have your Doom Whispers, if you have more Veroskas Contempt, and you need to have things like that, and you want to run those, I highly recommend that you probably go like three and three on Chupacabras and Veroskas Contempt. Uh, and then maybe shave one or two uh, other creatures. Like, I'd probably get rid of Bone Dragon for uh, Doom Whisperer, even though Bone Dragon's really cool. Um, but this is a fine hand. I mean, this is okay. I mean, we've got Golden Demise, we've got Fungal Infection. We'll be okay. So, um, I, I think you could probably go three and three, and then uh, you could probably. Um, if you wanted to get a couple of Doom Whisperers in here, you could. I don't really know if I would want to take Tetsumok out, but whatever. Tetsumok's awesome. I like Tetsumok. Alano War Elves. Just killing that now. Like, just no point in waiting. Just use our mana and get rid of that. We'll start being aggressive. Because um, we're going to need some real kill spells if this is mono green. So, this is... This is, uh... Definitely, some, definitely, uh, probably not our best. Oh, it's Simic. Never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's just a Simic deck. It's probably the Simic turns or whatever you guys were just talking about. You guys were talking about some type of Simic deck, right? Uh. Well, I mean, he had. He had the nut draw and messed it up. He had, um, you know, a one drop, a way to protect the one drop, and a uh, curious obsession. He probably should have played the curious obsession on three, but I'm not going to call it a nut draw, but it was pretty good draw. So, I don't know. I mean, I'll turn five, play a bone dragon. I ain't scared think I'm scared of you. I'll play Bone Dragon on turn 5. Let's do that Bone Dragon thing. Get this counter. You gonna counter me? No counter? Cool. Bone Dragon. Chemister's in sight. Well... Is Lotleth Giant a good card in this deck? I'm going to say no because the, the deck just doesn't have enough creatures going to the graveyard to make Lotleth Giant like really worth it. Um, and like I, I'm just going to say that Lotleth Giant is just probably not worth it. There's probably like better cards you could use. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say no. Like I don't think this is where you want him. Like Keep him in your Molder, uh, Molder Hulk decks and things like that. And uh, that will be good for you. All right, well, uh, let's go ahead and swing six. I'm probably um, just going to play crafter him. Get rid of my Sepperling. And he has to discard a card, so a little bit of hand disruption is not bad for us. Make him get rid of something. So we'll see. Jay Pesco! Turn one Lana War into exactly. Into what exactly? Right? Uh, well, I expected more. I'm sorry, I expected more. You get rid of a uh, Securitus Route. Um, a Root. This really looks like the deck we were just looking at. Are you stream sniping there? Nexus of Fate. Okay. Yeah, this is the this is the deck we were just looking at, just talking about. J Pesco or Peso? Peso? Yep, this is the deck. I mean is he Oh a river's rebuke. Okay. 
Um. So is this plan to just put stuff back in our hand? And this makes six. No point in leaving that mana open, but... Yeah. I'm just going to cast Tetsumok here. Kill his... Kill his, um... Elfheim Druid. So, get rid of a little bit. I mean, if he's wanting to spend that on kicker spells, then so much for his luck there. One moment, guys. I'm going to turn this fan on. Wow. <clears throat> Ramp from the opponent. Maybe we just get to beat him to death with uh, Tetsumaka. Yeah, I mean, they, exactly. They've got one card in hand. They need that to be something really good. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, he's got a ton of mana. Um, if he hits something that lets him draw seven cards, then we're going to be in some trouble. Like we need to, we need to do something about this pretty quick. Um, but there's also a really good chance that he could just. So he shuffles some cards from his graveyard into his library, and then he gets to draw a card. Um, okay, so it's not bad. I mean, Chemistry's Insight. It's also not bad. Memorial of Folly. Yeah, we'll go ahead and play that. I'm kind of worried he might have like some type of removal. I'm just... I mean, I guess we're technically tapping less sources if we do this. Not that we need the mana. Yeah, I'm just going to sack the Plague Crafter because it's the weakest creature here. Making him discard yet another card seems pretty good. Um, I'm showing a good KBS. Like, we should be streaming through fairly well right now. Oh! Omniscient, omniscient, but isn't he dead? River's Rebuke! Uh-oh. Okay. Well. Let's go... Stronghold. For six mana. Play... Bone Dragon, because that'll do the job. Pay three for the colorless. We get to... Cast... Ooh, see, that's good. Uh, we can put this in the graveyard. Put that on top, sure. Like, I'm pretty sure we just kill him with the bone dragon, but it depends on what he's got in hand. What's up, Englewood? Oh, Nexus of Fate. All right, all right, all right. So he gets to start drawing cards off his Arch of Alaska. What do you get, opponent? Another arch of like why do you gotta you don't have to pay mana for your spells. Take an extra turn, do it again. He's gotta draw more cards. He's, he drew a second card. Circuitous route root. Is it root? Route. Arch of Araska. What do you got? What do you got, opponent? Oh, we go to the sideboard. Ah, time to bang out, bring out the drum set. Yeah, okay, so this, the opponent doesn't want to play magic with us. He's already scooped it up. Forget this, man. Mono black control deck, man. We would have just had a bunch of duresses and just, like, 
chuck his cards away from him. Um, how's it going, guys? Um, yeah, yeah, the, the green, the green-blue breakout deck, huh? Simic breakout. Last Pro Tour, they had a Simic deck that was supposed to break out that wasn't really that great either. Not a fan of their deck, just seems annoying. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it just didn't have enough going on. Maybe we just seen a bad draw on it, um, but it just didn't seem like it had enough going on there. So, uh, Beast, you gotta go. Well, man, replay's always up. Don't forget to check it out if you want to. Uh, the mono black control deck looks pretty sweet if you guys are, if you're, uh, if you were just wanting to know, which is kind of the point here, right? When it works, it's cool. I bet. I mean, taking extra turns is pretty cool, but when it works, so. Oh, it's a Saffron Olive budget deck? Okay. All right. Well, I mean, I like Saffron Olive budget decks. We're playing a budget deck. Our budget deck just whooped that budget deck. So, whooping. Whooping. I'm going to keep this hand. This hand looks sw sweet. Like, I, just got, I got draw spells, which will get me some mana. There's an Argyle's Blood Fast. Might be better than you would think. We'll see. Seekers, a Squire. Well, I think we just play Dusk Legion Zealot. Alright, so he got a Forest. We know he's got a Forest. Alright, so... <clears throat> I guess we Dusk Legion Zealot here. Oh, there we go. Hit the land. So that means we can play Crafter next turn if we want to. Make him get rid of something. <coughs> we just want him to only be able to do like one thing per turn. Yeah, dude, we're not blocking one point of damage. I'm going to block a Jade Light Ranger next turn. Because you're gonna sack this to my plague crafter after you jade light. Okay. That voice though. <laughs> my wife says that about saffron. So you leave seeker seeker, and then you bin it. You bin it on the second one. You bin it seeker seeker se uh, bin. Okay. Well. So we're gonna go a plague crafter. <clears throat> now we'll get rid of uh, Dusk Legion Zealot, of course. And then he'll get rid of Seeker Squire. Now that still leaves us with a Plague Crafter that trades with Jade Light Ranger. So now he needs to be like Ravenous Chupacabra to be able to kill our um, Plague Crafter. So. Hello, everyone. Every time I sound it, I, I just remind myself as uh, I just remind myself of Mrs. Doubtfire, Robin Williams, rest in peace, or chill on your island, whatever. Uh, you laid a, played a league the other day, came across um, that deck, <clears throat> and was like, "WTF is this?" Uh, you did win. Also went five and zero oh until um, until you lava coiled your own bolus over a Drake. Oh, you would have went five zero. Oh. Alright, um, Death Gorge Scavenger, he's gonna gain a little bit of life here, no choice. Like, everything is just creatures. Sounds like a Spongebob possessed. <laughs> Do you swing? You don't swing, opponent. You don't have it. Um, I think that if we <clears throat> Discovery here, we're gonna see more cards, we're more likely to hit a land that we can cast Dusk Legion Zealot. Um, we did not. Okay. Um, let's go Graveyard. Let's just go to Graveyard with all of it. Murder? That's okay. Murder's fine. I really want it to land, though. Like, at least Murder's castable. Oh, Mrs. Doubtfire's got more O's. Hello, everyone. 
Right. There we go. Assassin's Trophy. Well, I would love another land. Maybe we should run one blue. Yeah, I like Saffron Olive. You, you watch Saffron Olive to learn how to pronounce the cards. <laughs> mm. You really do watch Saffron Olive. You make some really good insider jokes there. Alright, so we've got a little little shuffle. Ooh. Oh, Tetsuma. Alright, so... We could be risky. Hit the Dust Legion into land. Cast murder. Or not. Maybe we just murder this. Maybe we just wait. I really want a Dusk Legion here. Now, we're taking the damage from one of these either way, but one one line gets one off the battlefield, so. Um Get rid of Bone Dragon. Maybe I should have cast Discovery there and just went for the land, but... He can get Lasting Advantage off of... Uh... Man, I should have killed that before combat. Lasting Advantage off of the... Um, Death Gorge Scavenger. So, I'm going to kill it. Man, we really need to, like, just rip a land off the top. Bonus still got five cards in his hand, though. I mean, we've got six, but we need a land off the top. We need him to do, like, nothing for a turn, and then we rip a land. Fine. All right. Well, that's horrible. It's horrible. There's a Death Gorge Scavenger back. We may have to do like some crazy turn where we just like play a Duskly's and Zealot to buy some time and then like Tetsamok counters up. Maybe a three here. There's a land. Okay. So Yeah. Let's kill one of these. That'll put us at um, three. Depending. Yeah, that'll put us at three. Ooh, all right. And then next turn we go Tetsamok counter Tets. Just depends. He may not have another creature, or he may not have another creature he's willing to expand. And if he doesn't, then I think I just play the other Eldest Reborn. So each discovery dispersal, we take three, or take four, we go to three, and then uh, let's see what he plays. Seeker's Squire. Now that's not like overly scary, but unfortunately that's what he's actually going to get rid of. So that is a little bit scary. Uh oh. So that's two. He hits the assassin's trap. That's okay. We just wanted that as a kill spell anyway. We will take our land. <clears throat> See, that's another Eldest Reborn. Alright, so if we play Eldest Reborn, he just kills us with the dust. So if he's got... Go ahead and play a creature, because we have to play a creature for a blocker. Plague Crafter. That might have been one of the best top decks we could have gotten. Um, so we'll Plague Crafter him. He'll have to get rid of one of his creatures. Um, I assume he gets rid of the Seeker Squire. We get rid of Dusk Legion Zealot. And then we will reveal Tetsamok to put a Prey Counter on, on old dude here. It doesn't get trampled, which is good. Oh, 
Yes, Tetsamok is your turn only. You cannot do it. It's not sorcery speed. Okay, so like you can do it at the beginning of your end step or something like that. Um, but oh, you. Ah. Yeah. Well. Recon V. Got me recon. All right. So what do we do against this deck? Um, I think Ritual of Sit's a little bit better than people give credit for. Um, I actually think this deck probably needs an Immortal Sun or two in it because, like, I just think the card's wonderful in a control. Um, like, when you're trying to control those those control decks and you don't have ways to, like, stop the Teferi or something or stop, you know, their Planeswalkers other than just Veroska's Contempt, which is a great card. Don't get me wrong. Veroska's Contempt's wonderful. But uh, um, I, I, I would just like... Man. Um, Eldest Reborn would be really good. That's the first time you've seen a prey counter. Gotcha. I don't think Fungal Infection is great in this matchup. I'm not 100% sure on Argyle's Bloodfast. Argyle's Bloodfast may be the card that we want, just you know, so that we can grind into this late game. Um, like if we get one of get to make, we might actually get to start like chaining their, um, you know, um, fine brokers and things like that. Eldest Reborn um, could help us do that. As of right now, though, I just kind of want uh, Murder. Um, I think Murder is just a really good kill here. I wouldn't mind Joshua Vest because you have that five toughness body. Um, which means I can probably come down on maybe an Eldest Reborn and a Chupacabra. And bring in, you know, the, the Joshua Vests. I It wouldn't, like, break my heart to bring in the Death Touch of Azareth. Um, but I don't know. Like, I don't know if i got enough room for that. Yeah, I, I, I think that Bloodfast would only be good if we were just on this really like, great roll of uh, Eldest Reborns and things like that. I think if you want, um, I, I'm going to keep this hand. I think if you want um, Argyle's Bloodfast to be really good, you do need some way to you know to get some kind of recursion or something like that. I mean, the last time it was just wonderful in the format was when we had the Scarab God, and uh, I think that um, you know like you're going to want something like. Um, uh, I can't think of it. Uh, Eldest Reborn and uh, maybe, you know, Fine Broker, like that kind of loop going on for the late game to, to be able to really maximize uh, your uh, your Argyle's Bloodfast triggers and stuff. But, like, do I worry about this? Do I even care? I guess we kind of need to care about everything, but maybe not. Like, maybe we just don't care about this, this Branch Walker. I mean, it's three damage, but there's a Joshu. Dun dun, dun dun, dun 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 dun. It's a coming. He's a coming for you. Blood operative feels better in that roll. I don't like that card. I, don't, I just don't like Blood Operative. It's, it's three one lifelink. Eh, I don't. I don't like it. I get it comes back. I get you can like just surveil, get it back, do some crazy stuff like that. Uh, I'm expecting like Forest uh, Jade Light Ranger here, and I I'd rather kill that. Hmm. All right, Seeker Squire. Gets a counter on it as well. Bends it. He's looking for land. Looking for land. Um, I'm going to kill the Seeker Squire. Alright, well. Let's, uh. Let's, let's throw Joshu down. And then next turn we'll throw a Bone Dragon, and then just go from there. So you got a Plague Crafter here, opponent. Plague Crafter? Plague Crafter! That's fine. Like, 
That's fine. I mean, we've got Eldest Reborn, things like that. We'll get, we can get that back if we want it. I mean, he did hit his land. I assume that he's still looking for lands. Um, we're kind of hitting ours. He he keeps he keeps keeping the card that has the plague. Uh, man, I want to draw cards here, but I also want to put a body down. So I'm going to put the Bone Dragon down. Playing Justice Strike with Cast Down is going to feel <laughs> feel good. Um, it's a good removal sweep. Seems good. I mean, like when you're in, like I can't wait for Mardu. Um, I Mardu is one of my favorite sets. I love some Mardu. Another Plague Crafter. That's fine. And he keeps sacking the Plague Crafters. We hit land. This thing's dead anyway. Like I, I think I would have kept the Plague to make me have to put another piece, uh, another counter out, uh, which would keep me from actually playing this Tetsamok. Ooh, we can do both. Yeah, we can do both. Yeah, I like this. Maybe we hit a land. Capitalist, thank you for subscribing. Memorial to Folly. We'll put that on top. We'll put the swamp into the grave. Play our Memorial to Folly tapped. Pass the turn. So, now as he plays things out, we can. I don't know. I, I'm guessing he's keeping a Chupacabra for Tetsamok, I guess. What do you reveal here? Fine finale. Revealed it twice. Played a land. Alright. We hit a land, which is awesome. Because we can be like, bam! Hey, look, I've got a Tetsamok. Dun 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 dun. And then you do it really fast. Dun 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 dun. A little worried about. Um, he was going to try Tishar combo brews last night, but ended up getting stuck on um, time stretch. Right. Well, that's fine. Whatever you, whatever you enjoy is what you're more likely to like put passion into and look for those cards and and really like get into building that deck. And that's when you're going to find those extra little, those extra little percentage cards. You know, um, this card is good, but this card is just slightly better, and and things like that. And when you start finding those extra percentage cards, that's when uh, that's when you build really, really awesome decks. All right, down with the Tetsuma. This guy's mean. This guy is so mean. A golden demise. All right. Well, discovery. We'll see what we get. You know, I'm doing this type of thing. Okay. So we got a murder and a land. We'll put that on top. Put the land in the graveyard. And I'm going to pass the turn. Bone Dragon's not sorcery, is it? All right, so five mana, and we can get rid of... Yeah, okay, we'll get rid of everything except for Tetsamok and Joshua Vest. Oh, no. we got to get rid of... We can only keep Tetsamok in the grave, so... Okay. <coughs> so, end of his turn. Bone Dragon's coming home. You love scriptures? Man, like... Scriptures are good. I like Phyrexian Scriptures. I think that a copy of Phyrexian Scriptures probably would even fit in this deck. It would have been fine. It would have been absolutely fine. It it just makes your opponent entire like take an entire turn off because they're just like, well, crap, now what do I do? You know, that's a Varaska. Good old Varaska. This needs to be Hero's Downfall so I can kill that Varaska. But it's not. Alright, so Bone Dragon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Enters. Tapped. 
And he's back, baby. Go say hi to Baroska. She says she got something to tell you. She's probably going to tell him something in just a minute. It's probably just going to be like, down tick on you. Get out of here, dude. Um, I'm all right right now. We're okay. So if he down ticks, he just loses the Baroska. If he up ticks without a way to kill Bone Dragon, then he still loses the Baroska. Um, we can Golden Demise next turn for some decent value. Uh, this turn, I actually plan on just getting that... Um, Getting this uh, Tetsamok back. So, we'll see if he's got a Ravenous Chupacabra or not. I mean, he might. Seeker Squar. Hit a land. Hit a land! Nope. He did not hit a land. Alright, so... Might cast down this Seeker Squar. A Plague Crafter. Well, that's just me. That's just mean. How are we supposed to play this Baraska if you're going to Plague Crafter us? Okay, opponent. Okay, okay. You're not on the Reddit, sadly. You're an internet noob. Nah, dude. Yeah, I'm sure you're great. Um, okay, so let's go ahead. Let's get some mock back. And then I want to cast down Seeker Squire. Well, they're having this Chupacabra is not bad. Um, but I can Golden Demise and leave Murder open. Of course, I could Ravenous Chupacabra as well. And then just like. Yeah, we could do that. We're Ravenous Chupacabra one of these, and then we can, like, threaten to trick the other one. Hey, look. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, just go to reddit.com, create an account, just like you do with everything else. Um, like, I mean, if you just... You just want to go to the Reddit and like read and like people are constantly posting good decks and some are bad decks, some are good decks. I mean that's that's what happens when you deal with community decks. But um, you know people are constantly posting decks and things. And uh, if you just want to go check it out, by all means, do it. Um, we are currently looking at what might be our first loss of the night. This Golgari deck. Um, we uh, we won the first two uh, two matches and now we're in the third match and. Fortunately, Golgari's being a, being a little mean. A little bit mean. Land off the top wouldn't be horrible, though. That's a land. Dun, 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 dun. No, I don't want to reveal him. I want to uh, cast this big boy. Tetsamok. Dun, 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 dun. But yeah, like um, like I was saying about the Reddit, it's it's just a really good spot to, to go like post your decks, get some feedback and stuff. Um, it's gotten to the point now where it's kind of taken off and becoming like its own entity, I guess. Like there are, there are a lot of people over there on the Reddit and... I always say this, like, if you're thinking about, like, starting a, um, a stream or, or something like that, by all means, if you want to uh, post your your deck on our uh, Reddit or if you want to, uh, like, whatever it is you want to do, um, like, if you're starting a new stream, anyone under a 1,000 uh, subscribers, I, I um, you know, post your videos and everything else. Because when I, I first got started, I wanted to advertise my videos and stuff on Reddit. Uh, I wanted to advertise my stuff in, on Reddit, and I actually got kicked out of a lot of Reddits because it's like, don't just throw your like. Isn't this a magic Reddit? Like, could, this is magic content. Like, like what? 
what's wrong with you guys? Um, so, you know, there's a lot of reddits out there that don't like you posting your stuff, but, um, like, post on mine. I don't care. Um, plus, like, like, join the community. I mean, it's, it's what it's there for. Uh, but, uh, once you get to a thousand subscribers, I'm not saying, you know, once you get monetized, you should, you know, get off of my reddit, but, uh, no, um, at that point, I think that you'll have a following enough that you should probably build your own. Um, and you know, start doing your own community and stuff like that. Because by the time you're a thousand, then you have your you have your base audience. Like these are the people that are they're gonna be there. Like people really seem to like the fact that they remember something from the beginning. Like a lot of you. Like a lot of you have looked at me, like looked at me or said in chat or whatever. I looked at me. Yeah. It's all on the radio, y'all. Um, but in, anyway, I, I said, man, I remember. Um, um, I, um, I remember, like, a lot of people have told me, I remember when you had, you know, we were celebrating your first thousand, or, or, you know, two thousand, here we are coming up on five thousand subscribers, so, yeah, um, too censorship heavy on the, the main, uh, Reddit subs, you go for Cyborg MTG, yeah, there, there's a, um, there's a lot of censorship, like, if you don't post a deck with the right tag, like, if it's not in, you know, uh, open bracket, standard, closed bracket, you know, space, yeah, whatever, uh, and, you know, then the title or something like that, then they just immediately, you know, ban your post or something like that, which I get it. I mean, it helps keep Reddit's clean and stuff like that, uh, but isn't that what that sort button is for, right? Um, but anyway, yeah, I... I um, as far as my Reddit goes, um, keep it 90% magic. So if you've got something that's not magic, but you want to show to the members of the, you know, the community, the Cyborg MTG community, do it. That's fine. Uh, just don't make it a habit of posting non-magic stuff, and you know, don't slander anyone. Don't, you know, do things like that. And you know, other than that, you're fine. So, um, Jareth Miles, you're stealing that. What'd you say, Jareth? You don't post decks because you figured the best deck in the format. Uh, wouldn't get any votes? Probably not, right? Probably not. A1 since day? Oh, man. Yeah. A1 since day one? Oh, man, I like that. A1 since day one. I like it. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Anyway, guys, that was Deb's Mono Black. We did go uh, two and three with that. Uh, we've got some uh, donation bonus decks coming up tomorrow. We've got three of those uh, from uh, last week's donations. I think I'm gonna do that. Uh, we're gonna just try to try to build up like donations, uh, you know, over the course of a week, and then just play them all as uh, a donation bonus day. So um, this way, I can just make me, you know, the the good thumbnail. We'll do the deck tech. We'll do the th uh, the gameplay, and um, you know, check out these these decks that people want played so bad that they paid me money. Um, actually, most of them just gave me money, and then we're like, well, I'll play a deck for you, but whatever. Anyway, I had a lot of fun with this deck. This deck was pretty sweet. Uh, Veraska's Contempt could help. Um, it's not that bad. I uh, I think you know some additional Veraska's Contempts would be nice. Uh, Bone Dragon was fine. I actually liked Bone Dragon. Bone Dragon was pretty sweet in the deck, honestly. Um, we even got to bring it back. Like it was actually just really easy to bring Bone ba Bone Dragon back from the graveyard. Like it was like right after they had killed him. It's like okay, well, I mean. Let's we just going to see him again, you know. Um, so that that wasn't actually that bad. That was actually the first time I'd played around with Bone Dragon, and like again, that that seemed pretty good. So, um, Cyborg MTG, it is a sweet deck. All right, uh, you made it. Is this match one, game one? No, this is match three, game three. Play your Jun Unsealing deck next week. All right, man. I will do. Dark Storm, thank you for subscribing. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Kenneth, thank you very much. Um, Jund Unsealing. All right, so you've got a Jund Unsealing deck. I've got one for Barry that I'm going to be playing um, as his. Um, he actually wanted me to just play my Naya's Unsealing deck um, for his Patreon deck this this month. So. I'm actually going to be playing uh, a Naya Unsealing deck at some point this week, too. So, um, as the meta is starting to balance out, like, I mean, yeah, we're getting these, you know, fringe decks pop up and stuff. 
uh, which I will be doing a little bit more uh, research on and we'll study those a little bit more. Um, but um, like as soon as I know some more, we'll like when we know where the meta is going and stuff, uh, I'll do another meta coverage for you guys. But I'll be playing my Naya's Unsealing deck at some point this coming week. And then um, we'll be playing Kenneth's next week. So yeah, we've got a little, un little bit more Unsealing coming at you guys. Um, should be a lot of fun, man. I, I, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to what we've got coming up. So, some people don't like the subscriber decks, but you know, I've also seen, like, I've been in Merchant's chat and had his chat community go, you know, where's, uh, like, do you do the, um, the, the community decks and stuff? And he's like, no, because they don't get many views. Well, they get views by the people who post the decks. Like, if you post your deck, and if you make that one moment like awesome for somebody. That's what that's about. I don't, I don't, I'm not worried about all the views, but if one person gets to run up to his buddy and shows them shows them his phone and goes, "This is my deck right here," and like, and I, I pick up one new person that way, that's worth it. It's worth it. So, is it unsealing? Is uh, with Nizahal would be awesome. Yeah, I mean that that's probably pretty good. Um. Plague Mare seems like a good idea for the uh, side, in your opinion. Oh, and the Mono Black deck? It could be. It could be. Like, if you just want to, like, deal with tokens or something like that, if you're worried about tokens, then maybe. Um, but if you're talking about Crawl Harpooner... Oh, okay, so... Okay, yeah. I get what you're saying. Um, all in all, that's all we've got for tonight. I hope everyone um, had a lot of fun uh, with the stream tonight. If there is a Debs deck... I will try to play that tomorrow night if he posts another one. I don't think there's one coming out tomorrow, but I could be wrong. Um, so if we don't have one tomorrow, then we're 100% we're just doing um, as many of the um, bonus, deck bonus. I've got one from Lee Hansen. I've got one from, um, I want to say Rush and Poopy. Uh, who else? Who else? We had one the other night. I'll have to go back and see who who, uh, who that one was, but uh, we've got a we've got a couple, we've got a couple. Uh, but yeah, guys, you've been watching Sideboard MTG. Had a lot of fun. Hope you had fun. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping in, everyone.